Hello and welcome to this episode of Psychic Medium, Tony G. I'm Tony G and I've been a psychic, a medium, and a channel for as long as I can remember. I host a radio show every Wednesday evening on Ask One Radio. It's also available on Periscope and Moonstruck TV. And I also host Create a Life You Love which takes entrepreneurs and business owners and helps you to understand how they've created their life so you can follow in those footsteps. Today on Psychic Medium, Tony G, I'm going to be giving Beth a reading. Hi, Beth. Welcome Hi, to the show. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. Excited to be here. So, Beth, you have a number of I questions I for me. We'll yes. start easy. We'll start okay. it easy. Good, good, good. Okay, well, um, okay, as you know, I've been kind of on this spiritual journey for a while, right. like my whole life, whatever. But <laughs> I really have been trying to make it serious and crack down on it. And meditation, I feel like, is one of those things that I should be doing to help better my connection, get stronger with it, be quiet in my mind. Right. Yeah, right. Yes. <laughs> Why do I have such a hard time meditating? I'm better in a group. Alone, I'm no good. <laughs> yeah, you know, everybody has a really difficult time meditating because we have so much on our plates. And the moment we let our mind relax, all those things we haven't done or all those things we need to do start popping up. And then we think, why am I wasting my time doing this? I should be getting all these things done. I should be preparing this. I should be getting this done or doing that. But if you can get past that, right past that point, yeah. you will be right in that meditative state. Now, I do have a trick that yeah. helps people go right into meditation. So I call it the three breath meditation uh, trick. And what you do is when you're breathing in, if you're focused on your breath, you can't think of anything else. So let's try that now, everybody. Let's try that. As you breathe in, try to think of something else, but think about your breath. Follow your breath all the way down to your lungs or your stomach. And as you breathe out, follow the breath back out again. And the thoughts, you can't focus on your breath no. and on a thought at the same time. If you do that, if you take those first three breaths, painfully slow almost, yeah, yeah. so slow in and slow, so slow out, you will find that you're very relaxed and that your mind is cleared. Now, if thoughts start coming back in, what do you do? You refocus on your breath yeah. going in and your breath going out. And you especially need to meditate every single day. If you're worried that, oh my gosh, I'm going to get into a meditation and I'm going to be there for three hours, <laughs> set a timer. Start with 10 minutes because everybody can, can take 10 minutes yeah. and meditate. 15 minutes and then go up to 20 and make it at a time when you know, you know, some people like to meditate right at the end of the night. There's yeah. nothing else you can do. You can't make phone calls. You yeah. don't have to make dinner. Uh, you don't have to change a diaper, <laughs> whatever the case might be. At that time and point, you have 10 or 20 minutes before you fall asleep to follow the those breaths in and follow them out. If you do fall asleep, that's okay. The body is going to take what it needs. Even if you go into a meditation in the beginning of the morning or the middle of the afternoon, if you need sleep, you're going to go there. Yeah, yeah. So then especially have that timer <laughs> set. That's a good idea. Uh, is, is there, I've found different information on whether or not you should focus on something, focus on a thought, an idea, a mantra, or if that should completely go by the wayside and you literally should think nothing. What am I better off doing, especially as me? <laughs> okay, so yes, it, that is very personal. Yeah. Some people say a mantra like Om or God, mm -hmm. just so that those thoughts can't come in their mind. Yeah. 
That's a really good way of not allowing just random thoughts to pop up in your mind. Now, at some point throughout that meditation, even if you're saying a mantra, at some point the mantra is going to stop because you're going to be in that space, okay? okay? Yeah, yeah. If you do want to use a word, let's just say like love or abundance, whatever you want to focus on, bringing more in or understanding better in your life, mm -hmm. then just choose that word, say it slowly, and have no definition of it. Sometimes if we use a word we already know, yeah. like some people will wanna find, they tell me I, I, I'm saying the word money. I'm like, yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> and the reason you don't say a word you're really familiar with, because all the definitions and your circumstances surrounding that word yeah. are gonna start to come up. If you're saying money and you're having financial issues, yeah. That's going to cause you to be irritated. And just you saying it now is not like, Ugh. exactly, exactly. So I always say, if you if you if you want money, use a word like abundance. Yeah, that is a much better word to help you be in that place, and it, you don't have definitions or feelings with abundance, except right. it's a really good word, yes. right? Yeah, yeah. So if you, if you if the breath work doesn't work, you can get a guided meditation i have plenty of them on my website you can use a word like om or love or a word that won't bring up meanings and that won't bring up any feelings in you yeah. okay okay if you want to focus on a certain subject you can do that but again make sure the subject is something that is relaxing and pleasing. Some people light a candle and let a waterfall go. Yeah. And that way they're focused visually on the candle and they're letting the waterfall fill that, that noise be yeah. the noise in their head. Okay. I do have um, four meditations on YouTube that accompany one for each of the books that I've written. Oh, yeah. And those meditations, two of them are under 10 minutes and two of them are over 20 minutes. So depending on the amount of time you have, yeah. they're perfect meditations. Good. So. Okay, I'm on it. <laughs> Absolutely. Guided seems to work pretty well for now, but I know yeah. I want to be able to calm it myself. Absolutely. We'll and the more there. you do it, the easier it is. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Well, see, and I think I, I work up to a certain point and then I'm so frustrated that I just quit. <laughs> yeah, when you get to that point, if you get frustrated, the number one thing to do is the breath work. Mm -hmm. because breath is always calming and the slower you breathe in and the slower you breathe out the more relaxed and calm you're going to be okay so okay That's what i need okay Excellent. well speaking of words that trigger this reminded me of my other question okay so we are all one we should all love yes. each other right we should have Unconditional love for everyone. Yeah, right. Okay. Right. Easier said than done. How, well, I can, I can start my day great, right? But then I can drive down the road and the guy next to me who cuts me off can ruin my entire day because now I'm really mad at that guy and the rest of the day seems to just fall right. apart and go downhill. Okay. I would love to be able to, I guess, shrug off my anger, my frustration, my jealousy, my resentment, whatever, towards my fellow human beings, right? I need guidance on this. <laughs> Tell me where I need to go or what, uh, so what I need to do yeah. to at least have the patience to, to have some kind of love for everyone. So there are only two things in this world. Yes. Beth, I love you. First of all, <laughs> thank you. This is the most incredible. I am so grateful you're here and asking these questions right now. I cannot tell you how grateful I am. There are only two things in this world, faith and fear. And faith is really love. Yeah. So love and fear. One of them is an illusion and the fear is the illusion. So when we're in that total spot of love, what you're talking about yeah. and faith, the fear starts to dissipate. When we're driving down the street and somebody cuts us off or horns us or it's our, because driving can be, we're already at a heightened sense yeah. of awareness and like, 
knuckle grabbing yeah. the steering wheel, <laughs> especially if there's a lot of traffic or we have children in the back um, or like I'm driving with my dog. When I'm driving with my dog, I'm just like an old lady. I'm like, ah, I'm so afraid, right? We get in that fear yeah. space, yeah. right? <laughs> so what we need to do is if we remove the fear from that situation, now if somebody's cutting you off or you feel like you're almost going to get hit, you're not getting angry, you're getting fear. Right. Your response to the fear is anger. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it escalates pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, and it, it gets right up there because all of a sudden somebody has threatened yeah. your safety and the safety of anybody else in your vehicle. So the one thing I do is uh, around your steering wheel, two fingers, I don't care, finger and thumb, and you take a slow, deep mm. breath in, mm, and as you back. release <laughs> this breath, you say, relax, relax, relax. And I don't care, you can poo-poo this idea, but it works like nothing else. Now throughout the day, when you think of somebody that has something that you want, you see something in that jealousy is triggered. Instead of going, they have that, why don't I, or I want that, go, thank you for showing me this. Now I, I know this was shown to me because it's meant for me too. Mm. How can our great provider, uh, I use the word God, I, anybody can use any word they want. Mm -hmm. I'm not offended by any other term for God, but it, how can God show you all the greatness that he or she has for you unless sometimes through others and yeah. when you see these things and it's something that you're really like oh my goodness I must have that mm -hmm. or I would really like that the reason it was put in front of you is to remind you that that's a part of your path uh, I you, well, so and it's it's things like time and freedom to do things and I uh, you know the ability to just drop everything and go do something with my family, my baby, whatever. Those are the, my biggest trigger things, but that, I like that you said that. And I would take that in my path, that'd be good. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And, and if it is time and time management, you know, there's always a way to get everything done. Yeah. All you have to do is they're showing me that for you, it's making a weekly and monthly chart ah. and then reorganizing and prioritizing yeah. for you, that's going to be very, very huge. Ah, like, yeah, I do feel like everything's kind of It just happens scared. as you go. <laughs> like it's very chaotic and you're like, yeah. okay, this just happened, I'm gonna take care of this, now yeah. I'm gonna do this. And or I just shut down and go, I'm not doing any of it. <laughs> yeah, it's just all <laughs> the too much right now. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, so just uh, like make charts, make lists, yeah. and try to follow them the best you can. You're gonna be amazed at how quickly everything starts to pop in place and yeah. how when you, when you put it on a page and say, this is what I'm going to accomplish today and you get it accomplished, how much better you oh. feel? Because it is, um, it is something that is very, uh, when we think we're not accomplishing anything, right. it's very daunting to oh, us yeah. and we feel like we're just wasting our days yes. and we're really not. Just trying all day to meditate, it's just not <laughs> <Yeah>. working. <laughs> no, and I again, breathe, <laughs> breathe, <laughs> breathe, yes. We'll get there. Okay, no, that's a really good idea too because I do feel like it's all an overwhelming, it's all in my mind. But and you're trying if to I keep just track get it of down, it. maybe yeah. that would help. Exactly, and what you don't do today, you know what, you'll get it right. done tomorrow. You'll start figuring out ways where you can get more done in one day to free up time for the next yeah. day. It's, yeah. it, once you put it in writing, you go, this really isn't that much. Yeah, that's interesting too. I am totally a list maker, but I'm a multi list maker. I, I, sometimes I think it's bad because I have too many lists going at yeah. one time. But maybe if I just would get a list done, it would feel a lot better. <laughs> Instead of writing the list, right. complete the list. That's right. Maybe I can exactly. put it on the list to write another list, and then I'll feel good and check it off. There you go. We'll see. There you go. <laughs> All right, I have to look for another question because you reminded me of one. Okay, perfect. Um, let's see. Okay, so speaking of faith and fear. Yes. Um, I, I have a huge... I got not an issue with it, but um, self-love, okay? okay? I have learned that the fastest way to be unhappy is to find fault in yourself or things you can't stand about yourself and anything to not love yourself because it is so in contrast with your highest self and your source or how source feels about you. Um, what, what is 
I understand we all have our own hangups with it, and I'm sure that's part of the human condition, but what specifically am I, it seems to be a pattern in my life where right. I'll, things will kind of, I'll see like, oh, a, t a glimmer of hope. Oh, I feel good about that. And then there are a million reasons why I'll shut it down immediately and go right back to feeling crappy. <laughs> okay, so. So what's, what is, what, what's with the pattern? Why do I keep falling in these same footsteps over and over and over when I know that if I would just, I guess, give myself a break and really connect with that, that love that is there and focused on me that I don't think or feel ever. Um, how do I get there? How do I okay. get over whatever is going on? That's, a, that's such an extraordinary question. So the first thing is, we are more afraid of total acceptance than rejection. Because we've dealt with it, rejection. Right. We think that's the norm. We are not brought up to be egoic or prideful, which is good, but self-love and ego are two completely different things. So self-love can also be explained in a way of accepting self yeah. and being okay with everything about yourself. Now, I'm gonna go into a little bit of the ego versus the spirit thing here. Yeah. When we are in ego, ego will do anything to survive. Yeah. And the moment we start wavering toward spirit, there is going to be that little voice in our head that says, ah, 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 do you remember when you were 10 and you did this? Or mm. do you remember this morning? Something that reminds us that, oh, maybe I am flawed. Mm. Maybe I am not supposed to love myself. Maybe I am, you know, supposed to be like this. And it almost becomes, in the beginning, easier to stay in that place of self-doubt with that lack of self-acceptance than to go, no, I'm not going to listen to that. I'm going to move on. Because the real thing is, do we feel worthy of love? Do we feel like we are worth the love that we're supposed to be giving to ourselves? And when we don't feel that we are worth that love, we will find any excuse or those things that we perceive as yeah. negative will start popping up. And what we have to look at when those things pop up, the first thing to say and or do is that was a lesson mm. that I learned. It was put on my path. This is a school. Mm. This whole plane is a school. That was one of my lessons. I've learned that. I graduated that class. I'm proud of that. Now I can move on and mm -hmm. accept myself for learning that. We wouldn't be down here if we didn't have lessons to learn. Mm -hmm. You're and, getting tears in my eyes. Uh, <laughs> I we, think you're hitting it. <laughs> yes, and we, we, because we're taught as children, this is bad and this is good. We're not taught, this is a lesson you've learned mm -hmm. and, and you've graduated this. We, we, we are taught, you, you, you pass kindergarten, you get to go to first grade and second and third, and by the time we get third, we're like, I don't want to pass any grades, I'm done with school. <laughs> it gets tough at third grade, yeah. right? Yeah. So when we look at life and our lessons and the things that we've done, mm -hmm. uh, whether it be in relationships, you know, I have so many people come to me and say, oh, I was with this guy for five years and it ended and it failed. I'm like, five years, that's a success. Yeah. List all the lessons and everything you learned from this person and this relationship. Mm -hmm. And then all the things you didn't like, those were lessons too about what's not supposed to be in your life, what's not congruent yeah. with you. And then you can look at it like, oh my gosh, this was he was a great teacher for me, I was a great teacher for him, and now we're going on to our next school chapter lesson. Mm -hmm. So turn your negative things into positive lessons, something that you've learned beautifully, yeah. and now you're moving on to the next one. Yeah. A lot of it, I think, um, I guess some self-forgiveness is due in some of yes. those, which is I, even harder than, oh, I made a mistake, I need to move on. Some of it is, who have I hurt in the process? And, 
it's hard to let that go knowing now what I didn't know then. Right. Yeah. Right. I will say this, hurt is a choice. Yeah. Even though we don't feel that way when we are being hurt, yeah. but we can choose in any in each and every situation we can choose the feelings we have about that situation. Yeah. Most of us go emotional and we choose to be hurt, we choose to be angry, we choose to be uh, whatever that emotion is sad. Yeah. Um, but we can also look at it and say, I see what, you, what has happened here. I understand that's about you, yeah. not about me. So I'm gonna choose to have no feelings, good or bad about this. Mm -hmm. um, you've reached mastery when an insult yeah. doesn't hurt you, but you've reached mastery more when a compliment does not affect you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it, it goes both ways yeah. because both of those things, an insult or a compliment, feed the ego mm -hmm. to say I'm good or I'm bad. When neither has any uh, jurisdiction yeah. in your life, then you have come to a point where you are being in and of yourself and not of what has happened or what others are saying or yeah. doing. Yeah. If yeah. That, I hope that makes sense. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Good, 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 good. Yeah, and I, I suppose that I, which kind of leads me to ask, uh, there are situations that I see repeating, repeating, but they're, they're always different, but in a way it's like, oh, these are the same feelings, oh, that's the same reaction, oh, the, over and over and over. Okay. So change the word situation to lessons and repeat okay. that statement. <laughs> okay, I keep learning the same lesson over and over. I'm just not quite getting it. Right, But no, exactly. I think you're right. Exactly. I, so to open it up to uh, the experience lesson. itself. And then, okay, so the first time we go through something, we're like, oh my gosh, right. this happened, and it, it threw me for a loop, and, and it was, it, we'll call it a good experience or a bad experience, right? Yeah. And if it was a bad experience and we stick with this was a bad experience, sometimes it repeats because we're now in that energy yeah. and we have that fear in our mind that it could happen again, so it does happen again. Yeah. But then <laughs> if we turn it into the word lesson and we look at it, we, we separate ourselves and we say, okay, if two of my friends were going through this, <laughs> Over what, and over. Exactly, once, <laughs> twice, 10 times. What would I say to my friend is the lesson from this situation? I would look at this and say, okay, what, what you're supposed to be learning here is this. Yes. And then you have what you're supposed to learn. And once you have it, you've learned it and you can move on. Yeah. You might get a test. Go, right. really? Have you learned it? You want to do it again? <laughs> and then you go, no, oh. thank you, I don't. My, uh, we all have that. For some of us, it's, it's the partners we pick. For yeah. some of us, it's the, um, the, the career choices that we make or f even finances yeah. can go in a loop. For some, we go good and then we go down. We go good and then we go down. Yeah. And we have to go, okay. So what is my thing that this is the only plateau I've reached and why as soon as I get it, do I go? Yeah. Sometimes that goes all the way back to childhood. Yeah. Sometimes it's something you learned as an adult trying to learn about money at 18 yeah. or whatever it is. But once you figure it out, in your mind, you've created a new definition. Once you create a new definition in your mind, yeah. it's very difficult to repeat the old pattern. Okay. Yes. I like that. That's, yes. That, that gives me hope. <laughs> Lots of hope. There's so much of it. Oh, yeah. good. Okay, well, then that leads me to my next one. Um, mm -hmm. I have a nine-month-old baby now. Congratulations. Thank you. Totally changed my whole world. And um, I had spoken with you before he even came along, and there was some question of whether or not I was ready to be a parent, but then it just happened, so I had to be ready to be a parent. <laughs> so um, I do, I look at situations so differently now where it's how does this impact my baby and how will when he's old enough to understand what's going on how will my reaction to certain things affect him um what is the best way for me to because i feel like like you said this can be stuff from our past i feel like life got real for me even as a little kid it was like i went from a happy-go-lucky everything is possible kind of little child to like, this is the real world and let's all get real and stop pretending that you know there are rainbows and unicorns. <laughs> that was never my world. How do I keep my baby thinking this way for as long as he can? I wanna keep him open to 
where he came from and who he really is and how he has endless knowledge and support oh, and yeah. love. And okay. I want to keep it so open and I don't want any of my stuff to you know, weigh that down. That's such an incredible. So the first thing I'm seeing is Mommy and Me Yoga. Oh, yes. <laughs> mommy and Me Yoga. Start that right away. Start it today. I know your guy, your little guy is. That'll yeah, be a good upper body already. workout <laughs> for you, too, because for Mommy and Me Yoga, you're holding the baby oh, oh, great. quite okay, a bit. Yeah, he's a, so, a and eventually, guy. he will start doing that yoga with you. Yeah. And then put in a guided, as he's laying down to take his naps, yeah. put in a guided meditation and start that process with him now. Yeah. And, and, you know, at this age, if you want him to learn a foreign language, if you want him to learn... Um, to, to remember who he is, I, I can make a um, customized CD for him, oh, yeah. reminding him that he is love, he comes from love, he'll return to love, um, or whatever suggestions you want on it. But then play that while they're sleeping because that gets yeah. in the subconscious and that's where it stays. Good. It <laughs> absolutely stays in that space of the subconscious for them. So um, we, are, we are winding up now. And I know you have so many more <laughs> questions. I might have to have you back just because you ask the most amazing questions. They're really I long. When I typed them. them all out, I was like, I, I shouldn't read them. Big ones. <laughs> no, it's perfect. So we'll definitely have to have you back again because this has been such an incredible conversation. And I'm so grateful that Good. you were here because I think everybody watching has a question that associates with this that good, is good. very much in alignment with what you, we all want to be our best selves. We all want to be doing our highest good. We all want to be in that space. Yeah. And how do we get there? It's, it's, we, we can see it. We have glimpses of it, like you said. Yeah, yeah. But just to believe in that yeah. more than this. Yes. And before you know it, you'll be there. Before you know it, you'll be there. Okay. I should hold you to it. Oh, you can. <laughs> well, thank you, Beth, yeah. so much for being a guest on well, thanks for uh, having me. the show today. This I'm so fun. grateful for you. And uh, and I know your, your son, by the way, architecture. But I'll oh. get to that in a second, okay? <laughs> I want to thank you for watching this episode of Psychic Medium, Tony G. You can connect with me on my website or by calling 414-897-2869. Have an amazing day.